Right, welcome to this tactics video for Orcs. In this episode, we'll take a look at Mega Knobs, uh, one of my favourite units for the Orcs, very bulky, intimidating unit. And so, in this video, we'll take a look at the, uh, the actual units themselves. We'll zoom in, take a look at the paint job and how they've turned out. And, and then, we'll take a look at the rules, upgrades, uh, stratagems, bonuses, upgrade, all that kind of thing added together to try and get the most that you can out of this uh, potentially very deadly. Uh, and durable, tough unit. So, uh, got a new codex here as well, which has really helped the orcs out, I think. This is the unit I have. I still have two of these, not yet constructed, uh, just as an option if I decide to expand the unit out. I've always gone for a unit of four, uh, which seems to do the job. They've done okay uh, in that size. I may well expand them out in size later on. But uh, in the new list I'm working on, it's still four of these. Uh, they don't fight on their own, though. Uh, usually I have them in combination with some other units. We'll talk about combos as well uh, in this video. I'm going to zoom in now, we'll take a closer look at these models. So, this orcs, uh, this Meganob's armed with kill saws. I highly recommend the kit to you, the Meganob's kit. It is incredible, it's a beautiful kit. There's so many different combinations and arms and you know unique combinations you can go for you know no no two of these should be the same uh, loads and loads of variety inside that set it really is a, a beautiful kit uh, but that's uh, Killsaw Kyle as he's been named with his two Killsaws just there there's a standard loadout here with a custom shooter and a power claw look at that nice and they've been the theme I've gone for with these is chopping up Imperial Fists. So a bit of a shoulder pad there. And a head. <laughs> Helmet stuck on top. I sometimes mark this one out here to make him uh, the knob boss. There, it's usually that guy. Sometimes it's Kyle. Uh, there's another one here. See the different, totally different styles you can get. I've drilled out the ends of the shooters here as well. Just have a drill bit. If you like the way these orcs have turned out, then check out the painting tutorial that's on the channel here. I'll show you from start to finish how to paint orcs up, and it's the exact colour scheme that you see here. And then for uh, further help and for the bigger projects on the Plus channel, uh, there is the in-depth painting tutorial for the orcs, uh, which I'll take more time, more detail, and all the hints and tips that I can give you to try and achieve the results that you see here. So it looks quite complicated to paint, but the process is pretty straightforward. Making good use of inks and washes to try and achieve uh, a realistic result and saving a lot of time and a lot of effort but well worth painting these are these are big brutes these things these are terminator size bases here and there's another one like so you see no two the same fantastic kit and even the power claws different designs uh, with them as well but i uh, highly recommend them they're a real asset to have in your org Army. A bit of contrast as well. Oh, boys, you know, the six up save, these guys can boast a two plus armor save. These are the terminators uh, that the orcs can use. So, we'll just push those over to the side. Take a look at them here now in the book. So, they come under your uh, elite's choices now. Oh, they, that's what they were anyway before. So they are here, yeah, Mega Knobs. Now these have gone up, down, up, down in points costs. They were very, very expensive. They've, they've sort of come crashing down. So they're quite affordable now. I think they're cheaper than they ever were. So even more of a viable option uh, for the Orcs to take. So, uh, yeah, Mega Knobs, 20 points each. So that's your starting point. And for 20 points, you're going to get movement four. They are slow. We'll talk about how to help them with that a bit later uh, in a number of ways. Weapon skill three plus, that's good. Ballistic skill five plus. I wouldn't really go for shooting with these. It's close combat. That's what I'm after. That's their job. Strength five. Toughness four. Three wounds. They have got three wounds each, which is good. They can absorb a nice bit of damage. They've got three attack, which, attacks, which is a nice, healthy amount of attacks just for infantry models. Leadership 6, or it's is 7 for the Mega Knob, for the boss, and, and then a 2 up save. Really good. So your standard infantry fire paint, a bolters and las guns. You know, with toughness 4, 
two up save, three wounds, it's, it's a lot of effort to try and bring them down with regular infantry. So often your opponent's going to try and target them with heavier firepower. Uh, so we'll talk about trying to protect yourself against that as well in just a moment. Um, so you have to take three of them in a unit. I take four just to edge them up in size. You can go all the way up to a unit of ten if you wish. The standard loadout is a custom shooter, which is just uh, range 18, four shots, strength four, maybe zero, one damage. You know, a unit like that firing, you're going to get three or four hits from it in shooting. Uh, there's no minus on the AP, it's so really not looking for the shooting to cause trouble. Then uh, they are armed with stick bombs, they're actually carrying grenades. How on earth they throw them, I do not know, but they are carrying stick bombs. And then uh, power claw here as well. So the power claw is times two strength. Now these are strength five, so you'll be on strength ten. So you'll be on threes to wound pretty much everything uh, in regards to vehicles. Infantry, two plus. Uh, AP minus three, which is good. You're going to knock the armor right down the vehicle. Your average vehicle is then going to need a six plus to try and block the damage from coming through. And the damage is D3. If you get enough D3 damages coming through, against the target, that vehicle is going to be in a lot of trouble. The only downside is it is minus one to your hit rolls, so instead of three plus to hit, it's going to be the equivalent of fours to hit in close combat. So I, you can try and get them back up again. One option is to take a, a, a wire banner, which will give you plus one to your hit rolls, so they're back up to three plus. The other option is to just have more of them. <laughs> so concede the fact you're going to miss with half of your attacks and just, just take more Meganops just to try and to, to increase the volume of attacks coming through. These guys charging it, the mission for these is to try and take on a unit in close combat and do well. So if it's unit space marines, primaris marines, or if it's a vehicle of some kind, I want them to smash the unit up. If they do that, that's their job. And then to be tough enough to endure you know, incoming firepower to be a real bane uh, for the opponent to try and deal with. So they do have here we go, which means when they charge, you can re-roll any number of the dice. So they are quite reliable on the charge. Uh, there's keeping order. They've got their own built-in keeping order. Raw D6 each model that flees. Uh, on a six, uh, that model does not flee. So it's all the odd time. You might get a model that's meant to run away from bad morale actually comes back, which is every little helps. Any model may replace its custom shooter with power claw and with two kill saws. So you've got custom shooter, you're paying two points for that, and the power claw is 13, so 15 points in total. Or you can take two kill saws, 23 points. So you're paying a fair bit more, uh, an extra eight points, and for that eight points, you'll get times two strength. AP minus four, so you're going to cut straight through the armor. It's a guaranteed two damage, and then it is minus one to the hit roll. But if you've got two kill swords, you get an extra attack. So you, I think it's kind of worth it, at least on one of the models. So Kyle's carrying the kill swords. It's that. Uh, any model may replace its custom shooter with combo weapon, with a scorcher, or combo weapon with rocket launcher. So, and a lot of people have said, well, they take the flamers. The combi scorchers. I, I don't because number of reasons. Combi weapon with scorcher. First reason is it's 17 points each. You know, 70 points each, that's 70 points just to equip them with flamers. I, I just that's a lot. It makes them a lot more expensive. So I don't go for that option. The other reason is say you do get out of your vehicle. You've got yourself within eight inches to fire at a target. You hose them down with scorchers. The opponent's going to remove the closest models, and it's going to make it increasingly difficult for you to try and get the charge in. So I save the points and just go for uh, close combat ability. I take the combi shooters here, and then uh, just use those to shoot with at different targets, and just be content with that. So I don't take the flamers. I don't take the rockets either. Uh, I let other units that are more reliable with their firepower do that. Besides, I usually have them inside a transport that doesn't let them fire from outside of the vehicle anyway, so half the time they're not going to be able to shoot with those weapons and then therefore it's, I think it's a waste of points. So I just stick with the cheap 
uh, option there of the custom shooter. Yeah. And it, it keeps, it, it brings their cost right down. Uh, at the moment, for that squad, I'm paying, if I've calculated it right. Yeah, 148 points. That's really cheap. They used to be about 210, I think they were. So they, they've come crashing down in points. So again, it's a bargain time to get a hold of these. So little tactics and, and bonuses then, just to really enhance your use of these. I'll roll up some dice and just illustrate how they can be used. The first thing I do to help them is here. Clan cultures. I go for goths. Uh, anytime you roll a six in close combat, uh, you get an extra attack. So, you know, for them hitting on fours, just getting those few extra attacks for the unit just, just tips them over, helps them a little bit, as we may well see a bit later on. So I go for goths, just gives them a little bit more of an edge than in close combat. So you're looking for fours to hit, and then six is generating the extra attacks, which is great. And they have, like, you know, three attacks each. He's got four. So there's a good chance to roll a couple of sixes there to get the extra attack. So that's a, a good clan culture to take on them. So that's to try and enhance them in close combat. Uh, the other improvements they can have is get stuck in lads. You can fight and then fight again. So get them to fight twice is another great way of amplifying a combat ability with those. So if you, if you walk these across the board, they will be shot to kingdom come and they'll be slow. So I put mine inside a battle wagon. So I'm just trying to build up the layers here to try and help you get the most out of these. So they go inside the battle wagon. It's got a transport capacity of 20. They can take up two slots each. So that's eight slots used up and still plenty of room for everybody else. So now the opponent can't shoot at them until uh, the opponent destroys the transport. There's 16 wounds the opponent to try and get through before they can even touch these. It just means uh, they're nicely protected. Instead of going 4 inches, I'm now going 12. I've tripled my speed with them and protected them very well. Then to add another layer on top, I then have a, a big mech on a bike with a custom force field. He'll then grant a 5 plus invon save to the vehicle to make it even harder to try and kill the vehicle. Then, uh, once these guys disembark from their transport, he'll hang around with them so that they then have their 2 plus armor save plus a 5 plus invun save from shooting attacks uh, from the bubble that's been generated by that. So it's a great use. He can protect the vehicles as they go in, he then can protect the infantry as well. Another enhancement for these is uh, ch charges. Now, it's, here's the enemy, like so, and let's say you're here, four inch move, it's slow, that's as far as I can get by themselves, I've then got to try and make say like a nine inch, a nine inch charge will put them in, or an eight inch charge will put them in, uh, and I can reroll a couple of dice, but that is a stretch, it's not a particularly healthy situation to be in. Uh, so a great thing to add is a war boss. Gut Ripper hangs around with these guys. Gut Ripper grants them the ability to advance. Like so, and we'll say he can advance. Just one. As long as it's within six inches, they are then allowed to make a charge, even if they advance. Now all of a sudden their charge is a lot more reliable. Uh, nine. They've made it. They would have made it in either way, but they've increasing the odds of getting into close combat. So you can make an advanced move uh, because of the war boss being nearby. So that's a great bonus uh, to add on. So that combo works well. Another great combo to add is this guy. That's a pain boy, beautiful model. Uh, the plastic one from Go's Workshop. So have him hang around with these. Uh, when wounds come through, remember these are three wounds a time. When wounds come through, uh, he can help them ignore wounds on sixes, just a bit more durability added to them. And also, say you've got a, a guy here with a couple of wounds, he can attempt to restore wounds on these models. You know, these can be storing up wounds here, for example. Uh, he can, in the movement phase, he can restore the wounds and bring him back to health, uh, which is great, great useful for these kind of models with multiple wounds and for characters as well. So he's a great combination. And then he's able to add in 
his own close combat attacks he's got a power claw as well so you start doing this kind of combo in close combat and you've got a horrific amount of damage potentially come from this lot so uh, it's well worth lumping together and having units mutually supporting each other but uh, he adds a little bit of protection as well so all those layers building up just means you can keep the unit this kind of size but you're protecting it better uh, you're delivering it faster and it's fighting better in close combat the other one is to add a wild banner I did go for the idea it's about 80 odd points you get plus one to hit rolls but I spent the points on other things instead so what we'll do is we'll, we'll clear away all of the the bonuses here we've covered the tactics for them we'll just let this unit fight as it is against these primaris marines so we'll say they charge in you know overwatch isn't going to stop them let's say they make a good charge into close combat so we'll take the goths upgrade this the way i play them so we'll go for Killsaw Carl first of all with his four attacks. So looking for fours, we're on average here, two ones and two fours. Got two hits, happy enough with that. Uh, twos for wounds. Yep, and it's AP minus four and it's two damage. So two marines hacked down. Then uh, pretty happy with that actually. <laughs> well done, Kyle. Yeah, I I, you know, I like the idea of goths. I really do. I think this is good because I've got six hits which is nicely above average and I've got three bonus attacks now because of those sixes <laughs> that's generated another three hits sorry that's, that's a flashback to a potential game there um, so twos for wounds yes this is good yeah I think I'm gonna go for goths I think some people said you shouldn't do it but I like the idea it's quite satisfying close combat um, six is to save here is massive trouble save one You've got, there's no hope for this squad. D3, dead, D3, dead, D3, and all of those to spare. So I hope that's illustrated for you. They kill us. And then when this unit tries to fight back, you're on a two plus armor save. So that's the, the golden type of target they can go after. Smashing their way through stuff. Even if it's got a good armor save, doesn't matter. They'll hack their way through. So now we're trying put them in against a vehicle that may well be another option when they disembark I want them to charge and take something out say it's a predator I want them to charge in and try and destroy it so we'll say they make it into close combat we'll see if they're up to the challenge so you've got Killsaw Kyle yeah not bad Kyle that's good on average again and I got myself a bonus attack which has failed this time uh, we're all our wounds threes to wound yeah, one wound gets through, it bypasses the armor straight away because it's minus four and it's two damage caused. So we'll drop down to eight. Uh, then we'll go for nine attacks. Even fours. No bonuses this time for being goths, but we've uh, hit above average here. Threes to wound. Yep. Six is to try and block. This looks okay. Yeah, this is good. And this is all D3 damage. So yeah, there's six, seven, eight, which is vehicle destroyed. Well done. That's a cheap enough unit, and they've uh, done the job. We'll have another go. Here's Kyle. He's missed here, but he's got one hit and a bonus attack, which is missed. Threes to cause wounds. Yep, so immediately knocking off two wounds again. Back down to eight. It's hit and miss with the goths, but sometimes you just roll a cluster of sixes, and it's really good. Again, fouled here trying to get those sixes but still just with the, the volume of attacks you're still getting your hits threes to wound really good sixes to try and block none that's 4d3 damage so that's uh, four six seven eight done again rhino destroyed nice work there with the mega knob so they're chewing their way through the arm pretty effectively they're averaging out destroying a vehicle a turn here which is um can't ask for much more than that, that's pretty good. You know, and that's them by themselves, remember you've got uh, the pain boy chipping in, he may well join in that combat to help finish that target off, you've got uh, the war boss and so on, all nearby, but usually I'd be disembarking from transport and sort of heading off like I'd go for, if, if this was the combination here, I reckon I would do, I'd probably go 
something like the war boss into these two, the mega knobs into the marines, and I just, <laughs> just like, this should be able to wipe them out, no problem. So uh, it's all stacking up your units to help each other out. Mega knobs, I think, a vital part. The other great thing about them, should have mentioned, is uh, they're a bodyguard. And that is, you've got a tough metal wall in front of your characters. Your opponent's got to try and shoot his way through this lot to try and get to them. And it's going to take a lot of effort to do it, unless they've got really heavy firepower available. Two up save, three wounds a time. They're an excellent bodyguard as well. So I really rate the Mega Knobs. I think they're very, very useful. I gear them up for combat primarily and keep the cost of them down. I use them as a bodyguard. I don't walk them around the table. I try and transport them across as fast as possible. Uh, so battle wagon, uh, a truck even, can transport them quickly across the board. And then I have them as a bodyguard. They can hang around with our characters in combination that way and using the Goffs uh, culture then I think they're a decent enough unit. I think they're a bargain now. And, and visually, they're a fantastic looking unit as well. A real sort of bulky, clunky unit for the Orcs. And a very intimidating look about them. Very, very tough looking unit indeed. And uh, I think a, a great unit to have in your Orc army. So that's pretty much all the tactics I can think of for these. Uh, so by all means, check the comment section, see what other Orc players are saying. Uh, they may well suggest bigger sized units and see what kind of uh, success they have, or the different weapons loadouts, different ways of transporting them around. So see what other Orc players are saying. But that's the combo that I use uh, for the Orcs, uh, for the Mega Knobs, and it seems to work pretty good. Uh, if you want to see more Orc content, check out the Plus channel as well. Loads of Orc videos available on there. And it'll be a chance to see the new list as well, and leave your own comments and feedback. And plus there's uh, plenty of Orc battle reports on the Plus channel as well. And hopefully more soon of the Orcs and getting close to 2,000 points and a plan once they're finished uh, to do better reports on both of the channels to see how the Orcs get on. But uh, hopefully there'll be the, the Kingslayer army on the channel and cause trouble for everybody. Thanks for watching and tune in next time.